So continuing from where I left off last time, today I'm going to be stripping out the under seal from the E30's front wheel wells. This is uh, very quickly turning into a grinding channel, so I'm going to hopefully make a quick job of it today. And let's hope I don't find any new rust holes, although I've probably just given it the kiss of death by saying that. First things first, let me show you what these look like before I begin. There are a few obvious problem areas that I'm going to need to tackle. On the driver's side, I can see the obligatory rust around each of these studs and brackets, which you almost always expect. There's also a bit of rust on this seam here, and in the corners up here, I can see some rust too that needs addressing. On the passenger side, we've got more of the same really, but unfortunately one of the studs has completely gone missing there. I'm gonna to have to figure out how to replace that. Another thing different on this side is there's a bunch of drilled holes up in the top of the wheel well, where some bright spark in the past had decided to mount an alarm system inside the engine bay. I actually ripped that out when I'd first got the car when it was a, when it was a going concern, but those holes, they won't do because they're gonna let a load of crap into the engine bay. So I'm gonna to have to figure out how to cover those up, probably welding again. I think this is all BMW's factory undercoating and from my understanding they added this black top coat as an extra layer of protection just in the wheel wells. The only thing that makes me question whether it is all original are these rubber grommets which are on both sides. These are the ones that let the front brake line pass through from the engine bay into the wheel well. Now I'd be surprised if BMW fitted these and then coated over them being that the rubber grommets and there's also some red overspray on the grommets on the other side too. Maybe there's someone watching who actually will know whether this is the factory finish or not, or whether it's been redone before. I think it's original, but I'm not really certain. Anyway, let's crack the grinder out and get on. It's bloody freezing today, so I'm expecting the undercoating to come off quite easily with the wire brush, rather than spreading it around like it wants to do when it's warm. We'll find out.
Okay, so that's been a couple of hours of angle grinding with the wire brush under here and various other tools to get into the tight areas. It's gone quite well, to be honest, and the really good news is there's no holes where I'd seen a bit of surface rust poking through. The worst of it really is a bit of pitting, which I think is not a big deal, so that's all good. Like with the underside, I've decided where, where there's definitely no rust on the large area, solid areas of underseal, I'm gonna resurface it to take another coating, but I'm not gonna take it back to bare metal because I do think it will be rusting much more readily once I've taken the original e-coat off and it's been solid for 30 years and if it still is now, why fix what ain't broken? I'm really pleased with the condition inside these strut towers. They're actually in perfect condition, like factory fresh. So what I've done really is I've just keyed them up with a wire brush rather than stripping the underseal away because again, I just don't think there's a reason to. I'm a bit paranoid about the bare metal flash rusting straight away on me. It's freezing cold and condensation keeps settling on things straight away. I can see my breath. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna spray a bit of etch primer on it before I move on to the other side. That's been a few more hours of work to get this passenger side wheel well up to the same point as the driver's side one. And the edge primers had plenty of time to dry now because it's actually the next morning. On this side, we've got those annoying holes to fill in still. And the good news with that is I've got very good access from the top side. The bad news though, is that the metal is very thin. So I'm a bit concerned about welding it. I have got a cunning plan to help with that though. Someone who knows a lot more about welding than me actually shared a tip in the comments of a previous video about using a copper block to help when welding thin metal like this. And this is probably the perfect use case for one. Now, unfortunately, I didn't get around to buying a copper block, but I do have a bit of surplus copper pipe and a big hammer. So I think I'm gonna have a go at fashioning something up myself. Of course, it's gonna be a bit experimental, so I'm not sure it'll work, but let's see if I can fashion something up to help. And then I'll explain a bit more about why a copper block is actually useful when welding. chuffing how that's come out really. I've left this weird bit on the back just to give me something to grip onto more easily when I've got welding gloves on. So the idea of the copper block is it actually absorbs some of the heat from the job which helps you avoid blowing through or warping the thin steel that you're trying to weld to. It also helps prevent shoot through of wire which happens sometimes when you're, when you're welding into a hole like that you'll have a bit of the wire will shoot through and it'll make a right old mess on the other side. Because the weld won't stick to the copper, luckily, it enables you to keep a weld pool going as well, which is quite handy. And you don't have to worry about the copper sticking to the, to the job, so that's all good. Obviously it helps to have quite a hefty piece of copper to really draw heat out of the job, but I think this little one will actually be really useful because you want a nice flush press against the metal that you're trying to weld to you know, get maximum contact, maximum heat absorption. So a small one, I think, should actually come in more useful. Obviously, everything I'm saying here is theoretical. It's based on things I've read and advice I've been given. I've never actually used one of these before because I didn't have one till now, uh, but I guess we're about to find out whether it really works.
Right, well that's worked out really well and the copper block worked exactly like I was advised it would. It helped me avoid chasing weld holes and blow throughs around on this thin metal. So I'm really quite pleased with that. I wish I'd have known about this trick earlier to be honest. It would have helped me quite a lot on some of the previous jobs I've done. With a spritz of primer on this now, I'd say it's already pretty much an invisible repair and I can't ask for more than that so I'm really happy with how that's come out. And you might have noticed I did a similar trick to last time by welding on a screw in place of a missing stud. I was expecting to make a mess with that to be honest and need a plan B but now I've got it welded on I'd say it's a job well done, that ain't going nowhere. I've got a little bit more grinding to do just to really smooth out some of these rougher areas of old undercoat just so it's ready for the new seam sealer and new undercoat to be applied and I need to do that in here and there's a bit more to do under the car as well but I'll do that off camera, I'll spare you that because it won't be particularly interesting uh, but speaking of off camera, I also got the fuel and the brake line refinished they uh, came up really well after a, a good sand prime and a fresh coat of paint I went with black and silver which might upset the purists but it's what I had so that's what I used Anyway, if you've enjoyed this, please do give us a like. Feel free to subscribe so you can see what happens with the under seal next time. And thank you very much for watching.